everybody and welcome to Siena. Welcome to Class 6A Baseball. Well, I just got here. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to calm down. I'm going to start over. This is Roger Smith, VitefortBend.com coverage of District 26A Softball. The Ridgepoint Panthers hosting the Dulles Vikings. Now, the Dulles Vikings are one of those teams that uh, doesn't have that great of a record. By the way, I just had to reach out and grab something that was about to blow away. All right, so anyway, we're about to start the ball game. They're starting this one at 5 o'clock, which uh, pretty much gives me a heart attack. But uh, here we are. I guess I ought to kill the music. Okay, here we go. The first pitch of the game has been thrown, and it's been thrown by Malin Simmons, who is starting inside the pitcher circle for the Ridgepoint Panthers. We just started this broadcast, and the game has just started, so that means that I'll just kind of have to catch you up on who's playing and so forth. Second pitch of the game is outside for a ball. It is one and one to Kellen Ton, and this girl has been absolutely killing it. Kellen Ton, Thursday she went three for four and scored three runs, drove in two runs herself, and she hit two home runs and got a stolen base. Next pitch, and she fouls it away to the left, and it lands on top of the Ridgepoint dugout. Kellen Ton is five for her last six, and she has four homers in the last two games. They defeated Clements eight to four on Thursday of last week, and Bush 13 to three on Tuesday of last week. Left-handed swinging, Kellen Ton. One and two the count. Malin Simmons brings it, and it's way outside. She never should have chased that one, and she goes down swinging. So starting for Dulles after Ton, it is Michaela Wolf playing right field. Batting third, it's Maya Salina. She's the shortstop. Batting cleanup is Lily Gomez. She plays second base. Faith Martin bats in the five spot, and she plays third base. Callie Collins in left field bat sixth. Batting seventh, it's Olivia Gould, the pitcher, hitting for herself. Hope Burford bats in the eighth spot. She plays first base, and Kreese Johnson is the designated player. She's in right field. No, I'm sorry. She's not in right field. I already said that uh, Michaela Wolf was in right field. Alyssa Chang is catching for Dulles, and Kreese Johnson hits for her. Nothing and one the count on Michaela Wolf. Second pitch to her is just low. Michaela Wolf Thursday was one for three, scored a run and drove one in, and was also the winning pitcher in that game against Clements. Simmons brings the one one, swung on and fouled back, and Simmons bringing the heat. Not very easy for anybody to catch up to what she's bringing. So we had the lineup for Ridgepoint when we got here to the ballpark, but then we found out that there was a change. So everything is different. And I'm gonna have to make changes on the fly. Simmons brings it, swung on and missed, and she fans her first two batters. So I've got a diagram in front of me, and hopefully, It'll be pretty close to the real thing. Now batting for five from shortstop, number 11. Maya All right, so we do know Malin Simmons is pitching. Riley Ship is in left field. Callie Mays is in center. Blaine Simmons is in right field. That has not changed. And now the batter is Maya Salinas. She's the shortstop for Dulles, and the first pitch is high for a ball. Salinas three for four with two runs scored and drove in a pair. She hit a homer in that game against Clements and a double. She's had a homer in each of her last two games. Right-handed batter, one and know the count. Malin Simmons brings it, and it is hit hard to right field, twisting over Blaine Simmons, and that's going to be another double for Maya Salinas. She's going to go for three. Here comes the throw, and it's too late. She's in there with a triple. I didn't give her enough credit. So with two outs, Dulles gets something going here. Now
Next up is Lily Gomez, the cleanup hitting second base player. Lily Gomez was one for two with a double against Bush on in that game a week ago, and she also pitched a couple of innings in that game. She's a right-handed hitter. Simmons brings it. That's way upstairs. Gomez to be followed by Faith Martin if she can get on. Simmons massages the softball. Here it comes the pitch. It's in, on the inside corner of the plate. So Reagan Green is catching for the Panthers. I think what they've changed is uh, just the middle infielders in the batting order. Really, that's all. Here's the pitch on the way. Swung on and a tap or foul that goes up the backstop on the right side. Grace Yannick is playing first base, and that's what we expected. Alexis Samine is playing third. We expected that too, but I believe we have Soleil Jackson at shortstop. That we did not expect. Here's the one-two pitch. And it's high. That evens the count two and two. That one was pretty close as Simmons really took a lot off of it. And it looked like it might drop into the strike zone, but it didn't quite. Two and two the count with two outs and a runner at third base. Simmons rocks and fires. Down and in, the count is full, three and two. Over at third base is Salinas who tripled to right field. And we have a pretty strong wind blowing from left to right and I think that was part of the problem when Simmons tried to field that ball. It had a lot of clockwise spin on it. That's a called strike three on the inside corner. And Malin Simmons strikes out the side, so no runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. We'll come back for the bottom of the first inning. Ridgepoint coming to bat, no score. What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullet more fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck, because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it, from unlimited to shared data or mix of each, all in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 630 pay in. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After terms, regular rates apply. Wireless savings proposed to average of top providers. Xfinity internet required. Okay, uh, everybody, I just realized that uh, maybe you weren't hearing that first commercial, so my, apologi my apologies to Comcast, and we'll make it up to you during this broadcast. But this is a good time for me to tell you about something that uh, is just really wonderful that the Ridgepoint girls are doing, and it kind of enlightens me on something. I've taken note of a certain color of hair ribbon that they've been wearing, They've been wearing this bright green, almost tennis ball green ribbon since their first tournament this season, and it's for liver cancer awareness. Grace Yannick, her grandmother, was diagnosed with liver cancer back in December, and this is the way that she wanted to honor her. And I'm right there with you, Grace, because by the grace of God, my brother Peyton Smith got a liver transplant in 2007. A transplant was his only hope. And we know a lot of people that, that really need one because of the advanced state of their illness. That's their only chance. And um, thanks to an angel that I will never meet, someone who passed away and donated their organs, including a liver, so that my brother Peyton is still with us. So thoughts and prayers to Grace's grandmother. And I hope to meet her sometime soon. All right, so we are ready to play softball. So it is Olivia Gould pitching for these Dulles Lady Vikings. 
Tell you what she did in her last outing. Her last outing was a no decision where she threw two innings and threw 20 pitches, 65% strikes, and that is always huge if you can get your strike percentage that high. And she allowed three hits and three runs, all of those earned, and only walked one in her two innings. And now here we go with Belinda Simmons. Wow, what a hitter she is. First pitch is a change up and it's high. Ridgepoint is 16 and seven coming in. Seven and two in their district games. Next pitch is taken and Simmons lets a strike go by on the outside corner. Olivia Gould taking a long look at the list on her right wrist. She throws with her left and misses with that one. It's two and one. Simmons stands near the front of the box. Slightly pigeon-toed stance. And that one is down and away. And it looks like Gould is just trying to get her with finesse and maybe change the pace and then she'll bring the heat but the counts three and one good hitters count here it comes and it's a line drive into center field for a base hit so we're just used to seeing Melinda Simmons do that early and often now Grace Yannick is going to bat second that's a little bit different from the lineup that I was expecting Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Grace was coming out to uh, to get a stray bat, and it's Riley Ship. Say, so I need to stop looking at this scorecard and just look at the fresh lineup I've been given. Bunt back toward the mound, and it's the third base player who scoops it up but has no play. And on the play, Malin Simmons alertly rounds second and goes to third. And Riley Ship goes to second, so two runners in scoring position with nobody out. All right, so I'll just give you the lineup. Grace Yannick bats third. She plays first base. After her, Alexis Samine. She's the third base player. Reagan Green catching and batting fifth. Batting sixth, it's Nohea Anderson. She's the designated player in place of Alan Keaton playing second base as the first pitch to Yannick is downstairs for ball one. Blaine Simmons will bat seventh. She's playing right field. Kyla Correa is the shortstop batting eighth and batting ninth. It's Callie Mays, the center fielder. There's an off-speed pitch and just missed the top part of the strike zone and I think maybe Olivia Gould was thinking, come on now. So it's, hold on just a second, the 2-0 pitch, and Yannick takes, and there's a strike, 2-1. and one. So it's Malin, Simmons, Ship, and Yannick, Samine, Green, and Anderson, Ship, Blaine Simmons, and Callie Mays. That's your batting order for Ridgepoint as they bat in the bottom of the first. Open stance for the right-handed swinging, Grace Yannick. Here's the pitch from Gould, another off-speed delivery, and she watches it go by, and it's a called strike. And not only was uh, Grace smiling at that because she didn't think it was a good call, Olivia Gould was smiling, smiling at it. She's the pitcher, and even she knows that wasn't in the strike zone. But she got credit for it. Here's the 2-2. And yanking it down the left field line, it will stay in the park. But it'll score two runs. In comes Malin Simmons. In comes Riley Ship. It's 2 to nothing. Ridgepoint. Grace Yannick with a two-run double. She's at second base. And the party has only just now begun for Ridgepoint. So the Dulles Lady Vikings had lost nine straight before they won the last two over Bush and Clements. They are three and seven in District 26A play. And looking at some of their recent offensive numbers, I'm thinking they've got to be better than that. You know? But it looks like Ridgepoint is jumping all over them early. Alexis Samine takes a strike on the inside corner. From the left-hander, Olivia Gould wears an off-white glove.
Here's the O1. That's high. Hope everything doesn't blow away today. It's that kind of day. Here's the pitch, and it's popped up, straight up. That's a Paula Abdul pop-up, and the catch made by their catcher. Alyssa Chang found it, centered it, and made the catch, and that's the first out of this bottom of the first inning. Now batting for the Lady Panthers, your catcher, number 12, Reagan Green. Now Reagan Green, the catcher for Ridgepoint. Here's Gould's delivery, and it's ripped down the left side, but foul. That pop-up that Samine hit was in foul territory, so one away. Nothing and one on Reagan Green. Gould rocks and fires. And there's a line drive down the left field line. That'll get down for a hit and it'll score a run. Here comes Grace Yannick. It's three to nothing Ridgepoint. Mayday, mayday. Big rally here in the first and still only one out. Reagan Green is gonna come out. They'll replace her because she's the catcher. And in comes Soleil Jackson. Now it's Nohea Anderson, the designated player. And she bats in place of Alon Keaton, who plays second base. Still only one out. Ridgepoint already with three on the board. And so Lay Jackson running off of first base. And the first pitch is a ball to Nohea Anderson. She's near the front of the box. Very much an open stance for the right-handed swinger. Wade on the back foot. Takes a change up and it's just high. Dulles wearing the red pants, navy blue tops with the red letters and numerals outlined in white. Most of them wearing the red visors. Here's the 2-0 pitch and popped up toward the pitcher Gould and she squeezes it. That's out number two. Now batting for the Lady Panthers, right fielder number 10, Blaine Simmons. Now Blaine Simmons, the Houston Chronicles Girls Athlete of the Week. She hit a grand slam in that 19-2 win over Clements. And Journey plays her walk-up song. Crowds the plate from the left-handed box. Here's the first pitch to her outside for a ball. So Blaine batting in the seven spot. and fouls it straight back. If she gets on, she'll be followed by Kyla Correa. One and one the count. Change up and it just missed the outside corner. Two and one. Gould brings the 2-1, and it's a little looper over to second base and gloved by the shortstop, Maya Salinas, and that'll do it for Ridgepoint, but they score three times, and we'll be back. Dulles coming up in the top of the second. You're listening to VipeFortBend.com.
What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Hey, in April, you can get $100 off of a set of four new tires at First Tire and Automotive. First Colony, Greatwood, Katie Cinco Ranch, and also on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. Here's the top of the second. First pitch swung on and missed. Faith Martin plays third base for Dulles, and she leads off. One for three Thursday night with an RBI. She's three for her last six. Pops it up, and Reagan Green finds it. Pop Catches the pop up behind home plate. Now batting for the Vikings, left fielder number eight, Callie Collins. All right, Callie Collins. So each team with a Callie in the outfield. Callie Collins for Dulles and Callie Mays for Ridgepoint. Callie Mays' dad's GoPro is attached to the fence to my right. There's his cap. He must be under it. Yeah, he is. First pitch in there for a strike to Callie Collins. Lynn Simmons walks to the back of the circle, now steps up and brings the 0-1. And it's a weak grounder to first base, and Grace Yannick fields out on one hop, steps on the bag, two away. Score that three unassisted, and now Olivia Gould, the pitcher. Olivia coming off of a one for three performance. That was on Thursday, which was April Fool's Day. Lefty swinger, Malin Simmons brings it. Inside corner strike. So Gould who pitches lefty also swings lefty. Bright sunshine coming in from the outfield here in this five o'clock start. And outside with pitch number two, and that evens the count one and one. Base is clean and two away, Ridgepoint leading it three to nothing, top of the second. Simmons steps up and Gould brings it. And there's a ground ball toward third base, easily gloved by Alexis Samine. She fires across to Yannick and it's an easy one, two, three inning. For Malin Simmons and the Ridgepoint Panthers, they'll come up in the top of the uh, bottom of the second, leading three to nothing on VipeFortBend.com.
GetAGreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAGreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. Be with us tomorrow night, 645 for the Batter Up Show, as we'll have baseball, the game of the year thus far in District 26A. The undefeated Ridgepoint Panthers 6-0 in their district games, and the Travis Tigers 4-1 in their district games. The reason they have played one less game is because last Tuesday night when we were broadcasting the game between Ridgepoint and Elkins, We saw the Travis guys and their coaches walk into the ballpark, and that's because the Dulles boys have a COVID situation, and their game that they were going to play last Tuesday night had to be postponed. So a little bit of, um, I guess, off schedule, out of schedule uh, games coming up. You know, we'll deal with it, and it's actually... As long as everyone's going to be okay, and we probably, well, probably everyone will, we'll be able to do more ball games. And now here is the first pitch, Kyla Correa, playing second base this evening, Gould working with an 0-1 count. And it's a bunt right out in front of the uh, plate, and Alyssa Chang pounces on it, makes a quick throw, but she can't beat the speedy Kyla Correa. So that's a bunt single, and the second time we've seen a bunt single by a Ridgepoint player. Now Callie Mays, the center fielder. First pitch, and she shows bunt, but lays off, and it's high for a ball. A lot of left-handed hitters in the Ridgepoint lineup, and a lot of them on the roster. Six, I believe, out of their 20 players. Swing lefty, and there's a bunt attempt popped up, and a throw down to first. Almost got the double play, but Correa got back. So Callie Mays is out, popping up the bunt attempt. I'll put it down in my scorebook as BPU, and I honestly, I hope I can remember what that means. Now back to the top of the order, Malin Simmons, who led off with a single, came around and scored the first of three runs, and that first pitch is in there for a strike. Gould taken a lot off of that pitch. It kind of dropped off the table, but it still nipped the corner. A one pitch and Malin takes that one. Also in there for a strike, nothing in two. She grips the bat with, it's kind of a teal covered bat grip and you can see about an inch of it below her bottom hand. Sun peeking out from behind the clouds. It's bright in the eyes of the hitter. There's a line drive to right center field and it'll hop once. And it's going to be a double for Simmons. It's Correa stopping at third and with only one out. Ridgepoint has something going here in the second after scoring three times in the first. So two for two is Malin Simmons who, I don't know, I know she doesn't get a hit every single time she's up, but it sure seems that way. Now it's Riley Ship. 
She had a bunt single, made it all the way to second. Just because of speedy heads up base running, takes a strike on the first pitch of this plate appearance. There's the next one. And that's a soft liner into right field. It falls in for a hit. Correa scores. Malin Simmons coming around third and scoring as the throw is cut off. And it's a two run single for Riley Ship. Five to nothing is our score. Ridge Point just jumping on the opportunities offensively. Now Grace Yannick, who's already been productive with a two-run double, and the first pitch hits her on the left elbow. She'll go on down to first base. First hit by pitch of the game. That pushes ship over to second base. Alexis Semai, 0 for 1 with a foul pop up in inning number one. Corner infielders pinching in for Dulles, and here's Gould's pitch. First pitch swinging. Hard ground ball through the left side into left field. It scores Reagan Green. That makes it 6 to nothing. The throw gets away, but no further advancement. However, Ridge Point. Just pushes everybody else, everybody up one base, and the bases are loaded now. Alexis Samain now one for two on the day, and it's Reagan Green's turn. Actually, I, I said Reagan Green scored. That's wrong. I'm sorry. She was just picking up a bat. Reagan Green. Okay. Sorry about that. It's still five nothing, not six nothing. One out. Bottom of the second. First pitch to Green downstairs. Nice block by catcher Alyssa Chang. Keeps it in front. James Riddick is the head coach of the Dulles softball program. Here's the 1 0. And Green lines one to center field. It's caught. But that will score a run, or will it? No, the throw does get away. And as a result, Blaine Simmons. Correction. Ah, they changed the lineup on me. Riley Ship comes in and scores. For the Lady Panthers, tonight's designated player, number eight, Nohea Anderson. Okay. So that's a sack fly for Reagan Green, now two away. And there are runners at second and third. And the first pitch is in there for a strike to Nohea Anderson. She popped up her first time. There's a weak ground ball to the shortstop, Salinas. Throws across, and that'll do it for Ridge Point. But they score a couple more runs, and they lead it by a score of five to nothing. After two, we'll continue on VibeFortBend.com. What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. 
Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. If you want to live life in the fast lane, be sure to get to First Tire and Automotive. They'll keep your car running right. And during April, they have great specials, including $100 off of a set of four new tires. Ridge Point goes back into the field. And during the timeout, the home plate umpire came over and told me the score is six to nothing. And I'm going to take his word for it because since I've had to change my lineup a couple of times, my scorebook is a mess. So, okay. You say it's six to nothing, it's six to nothing. All right. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Working to Hope Burford. And I'm going to assume that Hope's big brother, Will, was part of that 2019 Dulles baseball team that made it to the second round of the playoffs and gave Katie heck and lost in a one-gamer. Second pitch swinging, and it's a number foul over on the right side. Burford to be followed by Kreese Johnson, then back to the top of the order, Kellen Ton. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and that's up near her hands, high for a ball, one and two. And there's a little tapper that bounces off the plate and then rolls over to the right into foul ground. Burford had a double last Tuesday against Bush. It was 0 for 1 in their game on Thursday over when they beat Clements and she swings and a very healthy cut fouled back. Lynn Simmons pitching a clean game. She's only given up one hit. And she's kept Dulles off the board. And Burford hits a ground ball to third base. Alexis Amine comes up throwing and gets the runner at first base. Quickly one away. Score that 5-3. And now it's Kreese Johnson. Kreese is the word. On Thursday, two for three, and she scored a run, and the scorebook on Game Changer said she was picked off, and I don't know how you can get picked off in a softball game. Maybe you can get a caught stealing. I don't know how you can get picked off. Swings at the first pitch and skies it, and it twists over to the right onto the tennis courts. Look out, tennis players. That ball will be much harder than the ones you normally find over there. Righty working to righty, Malin Simmons. Windmills and comes home with it. A bunt between the pitcher's mound and first base and everybody's gonna be safe. Kreese Johnson beat it out and Malin didn't catch it clean anyway. So we'll go ahead and give them an infield single. I say everybody's going to be safe, but everybody is just one person, that being Kreese Johnson. And now Kellen Ton. See if she can keep that, uh, that home run streak going. She's got four in two games. She'll try to homer in a third straight game. Swings at the first pitch, and it is popped into the air and off the left side foul. Alexis Samine chasing after it, but... Not even 10 Grinches plus two could have gotten to that one. Six to nothing Ridge Point as Dulles bats in the top of the third. Simmons massages the baseball. Here's the pitch. Down and away, and there goes the runner. Safe at second base. 
It's a steal for Kreese Johnson. Reagan Green's throw kind of tailed off to the right a bit and got into center field, but there was no way that that Johnson was going to be thrown out. She simply got too good of a jump. I don't think I'm doing any more of these 5 o'clock starts, unless it's a playoff. Simmons brings it, and off the end of the bat, foul. Ton down one and two. It's really amazing what Ton has done. Again, to review it, three for four with three runs and two RBIs. She hit a pair of homers in that game against Clements. She stole a base also. She is five for her last seven. Make that five for her last eight as she hits a weak grounder right back to Malin Simmons. And she's thrown out two away. And on the play, Kreese Johnson moves over to third. So, so far it's been too tough for Kellen Ton to turn around that which Malin Simmons has been serving up. And now Michaela Wolf, she struck out in her first at bat. First pitch to her is right down the middle for a strike. If she can get on, that means that Maya Salinas would come up and she tripled her first time. There's a foul sliced over above the Dulles dugout. Righty working to righty. Nothing into the count. Ridgepoint leading 6 0. We're in the top of the third. Dulles batting. Open stance and another swing and a foul back by Wolf. Kayla Wolf coming off that one for three performance last Thursday. Simmons ready, brings the 0-2. Hard swing and another foul straight back. The wind is not going to favor any right-handed pull hitter. It's blowing very strong from the left foul pole to the right. Here's the 0-2, and that is slicing into foul ground, and the wind is blowing it away from the fielders. Yannick gave it a chase, and so did Blaine Simmons. But no chance there, really. Alon Keaton playing second base and Kyla Correa playing shortstop. They're the middle infielders. That was the late lineup change for Ridgepoint. Here's the 0-2 and it's high. One and two now on Wolf. A lot of chatter from the Ridgepoint players. Here comes the one, two. Down and away, and that evens the count, two and two. Melin Simmons working it. Here comes the two, two. Hard ground ball to the shortstop, Keaton. And she doesn't catch it cleanly. Her throw is late and a run scores for Dulles. Kreese Johnson comes on home. So Dulles would like to start chipping away. So Wolf reaches with the grounder to deep short. And I said Keaton, I'm sorry, that was Kyla Correa playing shortstop. So maybe three tenths of a second was what she lost by not catching it clean. And that resulted in the Dulles Vikings, Wolf, Michaela Wolf being safe at first. Now batting for the Lady Vikings, shortstop, number 11, Maya Salinas. 
Maya Salinas is a dangerous customer up there. She's had a homer in each of her last two games, but again, she hits right-handed. The wind doesn't favor the righties. There's a pitch high from Simmons as she threw her to change up, and it's one and one. Salinas had the triple in the first inning. That was the only base runner in that frame for Dulles. There's a strike on the outside corner. So Ridgepoint has a big game on Friday night at George Ranch. Got to have that one. George Ranch beat them here at Siena weeks ago, and we broadcasted that game for you. There's a line drive into left field, and Salinas is two for two with a single. And that pushes Wolf over to second. Now Lily Gomez. Gomez struck out in inning number one. That retired the side. She takes a look at her left wrist before she steps into the box. Lynn Simmons with an intense gaze looking in there to catch her Reagan Green. Here's the pitch right down the middle for a strike. Coach James Riddick with some instructions from the third base box. Gomez digs in, and it's a little tapper right back to Simmons on two hops, throws over to Yannick, and that will put out the dullest threat, but they do get a run, and we'll go to the bottom of the third. Ridge point six, and Dulles one. This is VipeFortBend.com. <laughs> What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. I want to thank the team at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland for taking care of business for us, VibeFortBend.com, so we can take care of business and bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Blaine Simmons, Kyla Correa, and Callie Mays due for Ridgepoint, leading by a score of 6 to nothing. They got three runs in the first and three more in the second. Blaine Simmons had that grand slam against Clements, and congratulations one more time, Blaine, for, for being the Houston Chronicle Girls Athlete of the Week. First pitch to her, and it's a hard ground ball to deep second, and Lily Gomez can't track it down. It's a single for Blaine Simmons. You know, when I was broadcasting that game, I said to one of the Ridgepoint baseball moms, Send one of those softball girls over here to tell me what happened tonight so I can tell the audience. 
And I should have asked Blaine a couple of questions. She told me that, well, she wrote down that the Panthers beat Clements 19 to two. There's a bunt and it is foul because it goes off the leg of the batter. Kyla Correa. So I should have said, okay, Blaine, what happened to the game? Anything special? And she could have said, yeah, I hit a grand slam, but uh, missed opportunity. I didn't give her a chance to say that, but uh, now I'm telling you. Olivia Gould trying to quell a little rally here and a fake move by Blaine Simmons as the pitch is in the dirt. And it's a ball to Kyla Correa. The sun has gone behind a cloud here for a moment. Ridge Point wearing the home whites, purple shoulders and sleeves, purple piping on either side of the pants. There's a pitch that's high. And the count now two and one on Kyla Correa. Should have brought more tape to tape stuff down. It's that kind of a day. Correa with the open stance. Gould brings it. And it's a bunt between the mound and first base and nobody comes to get it, so everybody's gonna be safe. I think Gould was thinking that that would belong to the first baseman, Hope Burford. And she might have thought the same thing. And so it's unfortunate for Dulles and our runners at first and second now. And you'll give Kyla Correa a hit for that. And now we're gonna have a quick timeout as it'll be James Riddick going to the mound for the Dulles Viking girls. Be with us tomorrow night. We'll have Ridge Point against Travis Baseball and in District 26A, it just didn't get any better than that. Ridge Point is undefeated. Travis has only lost one game, but Ridge Point is 6-0 and and Travis is 4-1. and They played one less game because their game that was supposed to be against uh, the Dulles boys last Tuesday didn't happen due to COVID cases. All right, so Kyla Correa is at first with a little bunt single. Blaine Simmons is at second. She led off the inning with a single and that pushed her over. And now Callie Mays will bat. She wears number 24 like Willie Mays. Lefty swinger. Ridge Point has out hit Dulles 8-2 and leads the game 6-1. Each team has made two errors. Olivia Gould rocks, the left-hander brings it, and Mays shows bunt, and the runners attempt to move up, and everybody's safe as Blaine Simmons slides under the tag of Faith Martin at third base. She stole third, Kyla Correa stole second. And the table is set right here for Ridge Point to add to their 6-1 to one lead. And the pitch was a strike to Callie Mays. And she hits one to right field, and it's twisting away from the right fielder, Michaela Wolf, and it gets down. Here comes Blaine Simmons to score third, and Correa comes around third and crosses the plate, and it ends up being a triple for Callie Mays. She drives in two. So it's eight to one, Ridge Point on top. Now batting for the Lady Panthers, pitcher number two, Malin Simmons. Now back to the top and Malin Simmons, who has hit the ball hard. Singles to the outfield in each of her first two plate appearances. Lefty to lefty, Gould brings it, shows bunt, and it's got a lot of backspin on it, and she's gonna be safe at first, and the catcher, Chang, pounces on it, but could not throw anywhere, it would have been too late. So for Simmons, who is now three for three, that is two ringing singles into the outfield and one, well, it's uh, like chipping a golf ball about five feet and having it spin back at you. But it got her to first base. 
Callie May stays at third. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the third inning and Ridgepoint leads it eight to one. Their hit total is up to 10. And now Riley Ship. She had a bunt single in the first and now she's hit by pitch. Make that a bunt single in the first, a two run single in the second and hit by pitch here. And that loads the bases. Mays still at third. Malin Simmons moves to second and Riley Ship at first after getting hit. By the way, she's okay. And Grace Yannick hit by a pitch her first time stands in. See if she'll try to go oppo maybe. Get the ball up into that wind. Gould brings it. Bounces in past Chang and here comes Mays. Slides in. No, she comes in standing up and she's safe. Now, I don't know whether to call that a wild pitch or a pass ball. Well, either way, run comes in to make it 9-1 to one Ridge Point. Grace Yannick now with a count of one ball and no strikes. Forgot to mention she had a first inning double that drove home the first two Ridge Point runs. At, don't know where it was, but it's ball two. Gould is a finesse pitcher. She doesn't really bring the heat and she throws it kind of Zach Grinky slow. Misses away with that one in the count three and nothing. And I don't know that she would necessarily mind walking Grace Yannick here. Will they give her the green light on three and oh? Here's the pitch. And it hit her on the knee. She's been hit twice now and she looks kind of irritated. I would be too. So three hit by pitches in the game by Olivia Gould and two of them hit Grace Yannick. And so that scores a run. No, it doesn't. Callie Mays already came home. It reloads the bases. Yannick at first, Ship at second, and Simmons at third, and now Alexis Samine, first pitch to her, first pitch swinging, high in the air toward third base, Barton has it in foul ground, and that's the first out. Dulles really needed that. One away, and Reagan Green now. Green has singled in the first and got a sacrifice fly in the second and takes the first pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Maybe she'd try and go oppo with that wind blowing so hard from left to right. Here's the pitch. Way outside and she lays off one and one. Dulles trying to win its third in a row, but they're down nine to one. Ridge Point has scored three runs in every inning, but threatening to add to that here in the third. And Green takes one high, it's two and one. Ridge Point wearing the white batting helmets. Here's the pitch. Green gave it a rip and she just got a piece of it. It went to the backstop, but it was a foul tip, and therefore it's two and two. Green stepping out of the box, visualizing, contemplating. Now she's back in there. Gould delivers, and that hit her. My goodness. Three hit by pitches in the inning, and that'll force home a run to make it 10 to one. Simmons comes across the plate and she can take a seat and rest up before she goes back to the pitcher's circle. And now Nohea Anderson, the ninth Ridge Point hitter to come to the plate in the inning. And we're going to have a courtesy runner, I believe. Soleil Jackson is going to go to first base and run for green. Seven on the 
the box for your Lady Panthers. Designated player number eight, Nohea Anderson. Nohea Anderson is 0 for 2. I know she wants to put something really nice in the scorebook. One out, bases loaded. Dulles outfielders are deep, especially Kellen Tan in center. That's a strike on the inside corner, and maybe Nohea didn't think so. You're good. <laughs> my, my sign uh, flipped up in the wind and hit a police officer. She's okay, though. There's a high fly ball to right field. It's going to carry in the wind, and it gets over the right fielder, Michaela Wolf. And that'll score three. Ridgepoint takes the lead by a score of 12 to 1. When it rains, it pours, even when it's a, an overcast day here at Ridgepoint. I knew the wind was going to help that thing. So we've seen three triples in this game, and Anderson clears the bases. She had Ship, Yannick, and Jackson come home on that triple. Now it's Blaine Simmons as the third inning continues. Ridgepoint has batted around. We may not be here much longer. You know, I said it was 12 to 1. It's actually 13 to 1. Yeah, it was 10 to 1 before she hit that triple. That pitch is high to Simmons. The second pitch to her, and it's 2 and 0. Oh. Blaine is one for two with a single that came to start this inning off, and she came around to score. Here's the 2-0, and that hit her on the front leg. And down to first base she goes. Wow, well, I guess everybody's okay. Nobody's had to have the trainer come out and see him after getting hit by a pitch. So you got Nohea Anderson still over there at third after her three-run triple. And now Kyla Correa. She's two for two with a pair of singles and looks at the first pitch in there for a strike and Blaine Simmons steals second. No throw down. Ridgepoint going to try to finish off a 13 to 1 win. They've got the run rule advantage that they need. Off speed pitch swung on and missed by Correa and it's nothing in two. 6.45 tomorrow night for the batter up show from 11111 Harlem Road, Ridgepoint at Travis. Biggest game of the year thus far in 26A baseball. There's a pitch high. Now one and two on Kyla Correa. Slightly open stance for Kyla. Here's the one, two. Down and away, not going fishing this time. Two and two. Kyla moves the bat back behind her, gets the back stretched out. Looks like she is very anxious to swing and swing very hard. Gould ready, here's the pitch. And she checked her swing and fouled it back. Ridgepoint, three runs in the first, three runs in the second, seven here in the third, and they're still batting with one out, and runners at second and third. Swing and a foul tip into the mid of the catcher, Chang. And she tags Correa just to be sure, so Olivia Gould really needed that strikeout. Two away now. The Lady Panthers, center fielder number 24, Callie May. Callie Mays had the triple that drove home two runs to start this third inning fiasco. She likes to twirl the bat. She has no glove on the left hand, but a white glove on the right one. First pitch to her is down and away.
Nohea Anderson is running off of third. Blaine Simmons is at second. 13 to one is our score. Mays ready. Looks at a pitch high and outside. Now the hit advantage for Ridge Point is 11 to two. Gould brings it and it bounces in. Nice stop by Chang. That keeps the runners where they are. But the count is 3 0 on Mays. Open stance for the left handed swinging Callie Mays. Gould brings it. And that is high for a ball. And the bases are loaded one more time. Now Malin Simmons could cap a perfect day. Three for three with three singles. One of them was a bunt. And the wind is just right for her in this situation with the bases loaded and two away. Gould brings it down and away for a ball. Chang makes the catch and then looks over there at Nohea Anderson. Says don't even think about it. Well, you know, figuratively. Here's the 1 0. That's high, 2 and nothing. Simmons ready to hit with three teammates, including a sister, on the base paths. Here's the 2 0. And that's a strike on the outside corner. Not my style, said Malin. We'll have games on Friday night and Saturday afternoon as well. Kempner Baseball hosting Foster in a critical game for the Cougars Friday night. That pitch is outside and the count goes three and one. And it'll be Foster taking on the Kempner girls in the matinee on Saturday. brings it that's a fly ball to center field settling under it is Ton she's got it and that will be the end of the Ridge Point rally but they pick up seven runs and they're up by a score of 13 to 1 and Dulles will come to bat in the top of the fourth you're listening to VipeFortBend.com what if you made the rules you'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again and if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance starter plus internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. This VibeFortBend.com presentation of Fort Bend County Softball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity is a proud supporter of Fort Bend and Greater Houston High School sports on VibeFortBend.com. With the new Xfinity Sports Zone app, watch multiple games at once and check live stats and scores while watching another game. It's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. And by First Tire and Automotive. Make sure your vehicle's in shape for the spring. First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland, and all four of them are open on Saturdays. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. Don't miss the UIL softball baseball, I'm sorry, softball championships at Red and Charlene McCombs Field in Austin. June 2nd through the 5th. For more information, visit UILTexas.com.
Number 15, Ramiah Clark. Ramiah Clark is coming up as a pinch hitter for these Dulles Vikings. Batting in place of Faith Martin. And Malin, Malin Simmons still out there dealing for your Panthers and brings the first pitch over the inside part of the plate for a strike. Ramaya Clark, R-I-M-A-Y-A. Right-handed hitter, Malin Simmons, right-handed pitcher. Swung on and foul tip. And quickly down 0-2 is Clark. Hope Burford waiting to bat next. I think that's Hope Burford. Yeah, it is. The 0-2. Way high. I think Simmons kind of did that just to see what would happen. Clark near the back of the box. Simmons brings the 1-2. And it's a weak swing, just fighting it off, but a good job of doing that and fouls it back on, hits the backstop on one bounce. Clark has a lot of power, but she's just a developing player. Could really be dangerous in seasons to come. And another great job of fighting off a pitch. It was down and in and she swung and now she's kind of smiling because she took off her first and I know she knew that ball wasn't in play but for whatever reason she just kind of ran instinctively. Here's the one two. Swung on and missed. Simmons kept measuring her and finally got her. Now batting for the Vikings left fielder number eight Callie Collins. That's the fourth strikeout for Malin Simmons, she got three of those strikeouts in the first inning. And that is the first strikeout for her since then. And you know, I, I said it was Hope Burford on deck. I was wrong. It's Callie Collins who was on deck and is now standing in the box. First pitch strike on the inside corner. And I should have known that because Hope is pretty tall and Callie Collins is not. She wears the pink gator mask. Here's the 0-1, and that's a weak grounder to first base. Easy play for Yannick. The ball spun into the dirt and died right there. She just picked it up and stepped on the bag. Three unassisted, two away. Olivia Gould, left-handed hitter, stands in. She's 0 for 1. The home plate umpire brushes off the plate. The wind continuing to blow hard toward the right field foul pole. Gould with the open stance from the left-handed box. And here's the pitch. It's high for a ball. Good luck, Ridgepoint girls, against George Ranch later this week. That would really make the district race more interesting. George Ranch with no losses. They do have a game today, I believe. There's a strike at the knees. The count one and two. Correction, one and one. And so Ridgepoint with two losses really needs to uh, get George Ranch and avenge that earlier loss. That pitch is low for a ball and Reagan Green tried to frame it. Didn't get the call out of it. Sun goes behind a cloud. Gould ready, here's the pitch. Down and away and that evens, uh, I should say it's a three and one count now. Two, two. I think the umpire said it's 2-2, two, two, in which case I would have been right when I said the count is even. No, I'm wrong about that. <laughs> 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 
because that was strike two and not strike three. It was a called strike on the outside corner. Three and two with two outs and the base is empty. 13 to one Ridge Point. Gould swings and misses. And that'll do it for Dulles in the fourth. Still 13 to one Ridge Point. We'll be back. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know, take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there's one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com We want to thank the folks, at, the folks at First Tire and Automotive for being such great sponsors. And we want to tell you what's going on with their April specials. They're great. $100 off a set of four new tires. You can get up to $75 off your service repairs. And it's buy one, get one free on wiper blades. And you know what? Uh, it seems like every time I go to the wonderful... Uh, Fort Bend County Tax Office facility, where you renew your driver's, uh, your uh, you renew your your car registration. They really do have a great facility. They get you in and out quickly. But I have to inspect my car before I can go renew the registration. And when I do that, I almost always seem to get that. Well, I can't pass it unless I get you a new. Uh, you get you a new wiper blade. You want me to put that on for you? So I usually say yes, but next time I'm going to go to First Tire and Automotive first. All right, we got a new pitcher for Dulles. It's Lily Gomez, who's been playing second base. And she pitched, let's see, two innings last Tuesday against Bush. It was a no decision, and she threw strikes 67% of the time. And she throws a strike to Riley Ship to begin the bottom of the fourth. It is 13-1 to Ridge Point. Lily Gomez smiling as she pitches, and that one's high and away. She's been playing second base. Let's see if we can keep track of the defensive changes for Dulles as it's a pitch outside to Riley Ship, two and one the count. All right, I believe Julia Flores is playing second base. That pitch is outside, three and one. Yep, we got Lily Gomez on the mound and Julia Flores at second. Here's the three one, and it's high above the eyebrows of Riley Ship. Now it's Grace Yonick's turn. Meanwhile, I'll scan the field to see if there are any other defensive changes for Dulles. Yonick, right-handed hitter, facing the right-hander Gomez for the first time, and that bounces over her, to her toenails all the way to the backstop, and that enables Riley Ship to go to second. Grace looked kind of surprised that the pitch didn't hit her. Now she wiggles that back foot, digs in near the front of the box. Gomez brings the 1-0. That is also, that hit her. I'm not kidding, it hit her again. Three, three. <laughs> wow. Grace Yannick has been hit by a pitch three times today by two different pitchers. She had a lot of fun in the first when she hit a two-run double. But ever since then, 
she's gotten nicked. Now Alexis Samine, it must have either hit her in the foot or grazed her shin or something, but there was no argument from Dulles that, uh, that the ball did not hit her. Sometimes you just hear that little double click. It goes from body part to dirt or body part to catcher's mitt, and you just know. There's a ball down and in to Alexis Samine. She's one for three with a single that came in the second when Ridgepoint scored three of their 13 runs. They lead it 13 to one. Gomez brings the 1-0, and it's a strike on the outside corner. I think Chang might have done her pitcher a favor there. Kind of framed the pitch and maybe maybe influenced the call. Put it that way. There's a strike on the inside corner in the count one and two. Samine being selective. Lily Gomez in her first inning of work throws one inside that is yanked foul on the left side. Samine still alive at one and two. And the sun peeks back out from the cloud. Well, I think we can put this in the book as a W for Ridgepoint, so good luck against George Ranch later this week. There's a hard ground ball outside of third, and it's foul. Third baseman Faith Martin was trying to glove it, and now that I look down there, actually, I don't think that's Faith anymore. No, it's not. Uh, who is that? Maya Salinas is playing third. And there is a line drive into left field, base hit. Coming around third and scoring is Ship. That makes it 14 to one. Yannick stops at second, and it's a run scoring single for Samine. Now Reagan Green. Reagan has singled, hit a sacrifice fly to bring home a run and was hit by a pitch. And the first pitch to her is taken for a strike. Green near the front of the box. Lily Gomez brings it down and in, and it just mit, missed hitting her on the knee. And that would be two hit by pitches in the game. Fourteen to one, Rich Point. They've out hit Dulles twelve to two. Down and in, and Grace Yannick is going to steal third. She gets there. The ball gets away from Salinas, but only rolls about twelve feet away. She picks it up. I'm not sure, but I think Julia Garza is playing short for Dulles. Here's the 2-1. Green hits a ground ball, a big swing, but didn't get much of it. It rolls right in front of her team's dugout on the third base side. If you joined us late and you didn't realize we were starting at 5 and not 6, well, you've missed a lot. It's 14-1, Ridgepoint on top. Reagan Green poised, here's the pitch. And it's a high pop up on the infield at Salinas and foul ground in front of third base. And I think when she made the catch, she was actually in fair territory. And that's one out. Seven in the box for the Lady Panthers. Nice designated player, number eight, Nohea Anderson. That's only one out though in the inning. And now Nohea Anderson gets a chance to do even more She's already hit a triple that drove home three runs. And the first pitch to her is high. She wore, wears those sports safety goggles inside the batting helmet. And on a windy day like this, that's good. Not so much corrective vision, but just keeping the dust out of your eyes. Here's the 1-0. That bounces in and just missed her toenails. Two and nothing.
Nohea, one for three, but it's a big one for three. Here's the Gomez pitch. Strike at the letters. She steps out and takes a practice swing as she looks down at head coach Lindsey Gage. Two and one the count. Swung on and missed at a change up in the count now two and two. Ridge Point's going to improve to eight and two in district play and they've won six out of seven since that first district loss to George Ranch. So that this win today means they're gonna be seven for their last eight. And that's inside, the count goes full on Noahia Anderson. Here's the pitch. Nohea swings and misses. It's a fouled hip into Chang's mitt to away. Now Blaine Simmons, who looks like she is really anxious to get up there and hit again. Right fielder, number 10, Blaine Simmons. She got a little taste of that grand slam last week and I think she wants to go downtown again. First time she's seen Lily Gomez. That's high. Blaine stands near the front of the box, although Gomez does throw a lot harder than Gould. Here's the 1-0. That's high for a ball. Blaine and her twin sister, Malin, are juniors. malin has been starting on the varsity since she was a freshman. Here's the pitch. That's a strike on the outside corner. Ridge Point has all the runs they need, although they wouldn't mind a few more. It's 14 to one. And when Dulles comes up in the top of the fifth, they'll have to score a lot of runs to prolong this thing. And that's not gonna happen. Simmons with a hard hit ball to right field in there for a two run single. And that makes it 16 to one. So a two run single and now Kyla Correa is due. But they called ball game. It's the softball version of a TKO, a technical knockout. We'll be back with the totals right after this and wrap it up on VipeFortBend.com. What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance starter plus internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. There are no words to describe it. The isolation. The boredom. The loneliness. If you're wondering where your teenage son or daughter's spirit went, you're hardly alone. The past year has been devastating, especially for them. But here's the good news. They might just find it again, playing high school sports. Workouts that stimulate, teammates and coaches that care, the sense of belonging so many of us have been missing lately. That's what school sports are all about. The sense of achievement is real, and the camaraderie is hard to beat. Coping with uncertainty is difficult, but school sports can help the teenagers in your family start feeling like themselves again. Encourage them to give it a try. High school sports, it's so much more than a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Well, for Ridge Point, it was an easy victory. 16 to one is the final for the Panthers. 16 runs on 13 hits, 
They made two errors, which obviously didn't do them too much harm. Dulles with just one run on two hits, and they also committed two errors. The winning pitcher tonight is Malin Simmons, and Olivia Gould takes the, li the loss for the Lady Vikings. For Ridge Point, the Lady Panthers are now 17-7. and They're 8-2 and two in District 26A play, and they've won seven of their last eight. And so when they began that hot streak, winning seven of the last eight, the last time they lost before that was against George Ranch right here in Siena. And so the Lady Panthers feel like they owe George Ranch one. And so they will go there later this week and try and get the win. We want to remind you that we'll have Travis against Ridgepoint Baseball tomorrow night starting at 645 with the Batter Up Show. That is as good as it gets in Fort Bend ISD as far as the regular season goes. It's the usual suspects. It always seems like it's Travis and Ridgepoint at the top of the district. Ridgepoint 6-0 in District 26A play, and Dulles is 4-1. By the way, I'll talk about this more tomorrow night, but for whatever reason, the people who make state rankings in baseball, they, um, they're not too impressed with Fort Bend ISD. They don't have anybody from Fort Bend ISD ranked in their top 25. We'll see if that changes anytime soon. For anybody who's part of the Vipe team, thank you so much for being with us. Roger Smith saying so long from Siena, where Ridgepoint defeats Dulles in softball 16-1. to We will talk to you tomorrow night when we bring you Ridgepoint and Travis. Good evening, everybody.